What's up guys, Houndish here, and today it's time to jump in, talk about some Destiny 2 new stuff, some stuff about future content, and some things to be aware of regarding future updates to the game. So we're going to speak about the October 30th update, maintenance, and times to be aware of, as well as some of the changes, but we're also going to talk about new vendors in the game that we can now tie to the Arms Week event. We have more information that suggests this will be coming into the game very soon. We'll talk about some events and things to be aware of in the game, and some new leaks about black weapon types, the last word, Thorn, and the Rose hand cannon. And we got a couple of things to talk about regarding the first annual pass update Black Armory, which is coming in December. So a lot to speak about in this video, guys. If you do enjoy it, a rating below is very much appreciated. If you're new around here, be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see more D2 content. But for now, let's jump straight into it. So the first thing we're going to speak about is the October 30th update, which of course brings a lot of important changes to the game. We did break down some of those changes in my previous video, which I'll link below, and we'll speak about some new details in a moment, but there is some scheduled maintenance for Destiny 2 beginning at 8am PDT on Tuesday the 30th of October, and at 9.45am PDT, Update 2.05 will need to have been downloaded for you to continue playing into the weekly reset. So do bear that in mind. From two hours before reset happens, the update will be available. And then when we jump in, we'll get a bunch of the quality of life fixes, the weekly reset, and a new exotic quest. There are some high priority issues that Bungie want players to take note of. They're investigating an issue where a team will defeat their primeval, but the opposing team receives credit for the kill. And the next one's a pretty important one. We're investigating an issue which is preventing the Lunas Howl and Not Forgotten from being reclaimed after earned in game. Players who obtain these should ensure they are not dismantled. So I wouldn't have thought that many players would actually want to dismantle things like Lunas Howl or Not Forgotten, but if you do own them and acquire them, do take note of what they're saying there about actually reclaiming the weapon. Next though, I wanted to speak about some new vendors hidden in the game and an event that we now know they are actually going to be tied to. So a while ago we did see Arms Week pop up in the game. There's one activity listed for PvP, and then we had a series of others listed for Nightfalls, which reward exotic catalysts when you complete them. Now recently I have spoken about some new foundry vendors in the game, Viper9940, Shinju9940, Octavius, and Hector9940. Each one of these is linked to a specific faction, and if you look at the data right here, they're actually subtitled and categorized as foundry frames. We should also take note of the icon in the database for these. They have both the gunsmith icon, but then also the map vendor icon that you can see right here. Interestingly enough though, each one of these vendors has a section in the bottom of their inventory in the database called Arms Week Intro, and you can see that there is a classified unnamed item there. It's actually showing an icon from the Dawning from one of the packages, but we often see this with placeholders in the game. And so essentially we can confirm that all of these foundry frames will be linked to Arms Week. Each of them has a category to introduce you to the Arms Week event, and like I said, they all offer different foundry weapons, so Hector9940 is the Hake vendor, and they categorize weapons in some interesting ways we've got pvp primary weapons and strike power weapons there are also pvp heavy weapons and this further supports the listing of both a crucible game mode as well as the requirement to run strikes for some of these arms week objectives and what seems possible is that there could actually be a featured vendor so it could be that hector 9940 would come up as an arms week vendor on a specific week maybe this could be something that we see every three weeks like the iron banner but it's clear that there will be objectives across pvp and then strikes specifically maybe they'll use this to bring year one weapons back into the game with upgraded perks and bonuses. We know that pretty much all of the remaining unobtainable catalysts in the game right now are linked to the Arms Week event, and this could potentially be the plan for Forsaken's exotic catalysts as well. Maybe Bungie want to roll them out as part of the Arms Week event, essentially making catalysts for certain exotics as well as upgrades for new weapons and returning year one weapons available during those Arms Week events. We had speculated that these could be tied to Arms Week, but now we know that this is indeed the case. I'd love to hear your thoughts below. There is another vendor though actually shown in the database, and this is the Research Assistant, and the description says sent to support mysterious benefactors in their research. I don't believe this is currently in the game. It did remind me of Vanguard Research for a moment, and that was Akora's old meditations for daily missions, but I couldn't find anything associated with that, so it looks like this could be another upcoming vendor in the game, but we'll have to wait and see. The it could be that we get Arms Week specifically though at the start of Season 5, and the fact that we also haven't seen Trials or the Faction Rally Return yet, it could be that they were holding off with this event to bring it back with the other revamped events, and this of course would make the Ritual Cycle for the game much healthier. Up next though, if you're on PlayStation you may have heard about PSN name changes, and PlayStation did say that there was a risk if certain games weren't actually updated, that it could affect in-game data for certain games, but DMG has clarified our test teams will be looking at this, we won't have 100% answers, 
answers until they've completed their work, but we have confidence that Destiny 2 will not be impacted by any issues if players choose to change their name, and this includes any legacy information from D1, like your emblems for being a veteran player. In terms of Destiny 1, we're looking at some edge case scenarios that won't impact the majority of players, Potential issues may range from issues signing into characters, failing to join friends, or various error codes, and Bungie.net may have some oddities when attempting to search for player accounts or interacting with old PGCR data, but we need to test around this as well. So essentially what they're saying is that the bulk of Destiny 2, its triumphs, legacy information, everything like that, should be fine with any PSN name changes. They do have to do some further looking into Destiny 1 and how that could affect some older stuff. So if PSN name change is something you're interested, do bear in mind that Bungie are looking into the effects this could have on the game, and I'll keep you guys posted if they have anything relevant to say. Next though, let's speak about some leaked stuff. Briefly, we've had a lot of leaks recently about the Black Armory expansion, upcoming annual pass content, and even Destiny 3. There was a leak a little while ago that suggested we could be seeing black weapons or a black tier of weapons in the Black Armory, and this would be an additional tier on top of, you know, rare, legendary, and exotic weapons. And somebody commented on a Reddit post discussing this, saying that someone had claimed we were going to get the Rose as an exotic hand cannon, and in the lore, the Rose was the original version of the Thorn. And on that subject, Anon the Nine said, it's coming in Penumbra as well as another bird that we love. So Anon the Nine has said that the Rose hand cannon is actually going to come into the game. That would be a brand new weapon that we'd never seen before, but they also say as well as another bird that we love. And it sounds like this could be a little tease to the hawk moon right there. But of course, Anon has leaked a lot of Destiny stuff, including Forsaken, and of course they leaked that Thunderlord would come in Festival of the Lost, and that should be happening on Tuesday from what we know. So it's pretty interesting that they're saying the Thorn will now come into the game in Penumbra, but they did also clarify Black Armory would feature the last word, and the Thorn would come back in Joker's Wild. And both of those certainly sound possible, but it's not going to be long until we actually get proper details about this. So according to the roadmap, the likelihood is that Black Armory would actually launch on December the 4th. That is of course a Tuesday, so that makes sense. Bungie also have the Dawning launching in December. So if that launched on the second week or maybe the third week of December, that would be pretty typical. And with it being a holiday season, Bungie always tend to go for the first week in December. On top of this, Bungie have been sampling some of the new content in a new community kind of summit thing. So streamer T-Rex over on Twitter actually posted that he's been over to Bungie to check out some of the new content coming down the pipeline. And I know a few different content creators were over there, so we're getting pretty close to the reveal of Black Armory soon. Now though, let's round up a few more things. And this one is about Gambit and the changes coming up on the 30th. So Robbie Stevens from Bungie said, the Ascendant Primeval Servitor will have a greater chance to spawn every week, not just on week three of the curse. For week one and two curse, the spawn rate increase will be higher than the current week three spawn rate. So even when we're not on the week three curse, we're gonna see that boss quite a bit. But then he says week three will have the highest spawn rate for the Servitor, just like it does right now. And on week three, it will have almost the same spawn rate as any other primeval in the game. So the hunt for Malfeasance is absolutely gonna get easier next week. And also don't forget, we're going to have triple infamy on the weekend next week, as well as a week long double infamy event. And those of course are the points that you earn in the ranking system in Gambit. So if you wanted to rank up multiple times to achieve titles, unlock loot or anything like that, it's gonna be pretty awesome. Also on the subject of October 30th updates though, someone mentioned the Suras regime bug where the scope is yellow and DMG said that should also be fixed. And this spoke specifically about Masterwork cores being changed to Enhancement cores in the Bungie update. How the exotic changes are going to work, we'll see more armor drops. But a few weeks ago they specified they're rebalancing the functionality of the distribution and dynamo perks, requiring players to be near opponents for super energy benefits. They're increasing sword damage in PvE, as well as fusion rifle damage, adjusting the visibility of the Titan's banner shield, increasing the chance of Nightfall exclusive weapons dropping, reducing the time for shader deletion from inventory, and a bunch of other stuff guys. Those full patch notes will become available on Tuesday, but there are a lot of good changes there. On Twitter though, Bungie tweeted some festival related stuff, transform into Reef Royalty to celebrate Festival of the Lost, scan the code in Snapchat to unlock the Aldrin mask. So if you fancy the snap lens for Prince Aldrin, I'll link that one down below. Also, if you did win a recent Bungie bounty emblem, but haven't been rewarded that emblem yet, Cosmo said, post in the following thread with the required info. So they're having members of the Bungie team actually check up on winners of these emblems and making sure that they are distributed to the accounts. So I'll also link the forum post below in case 
because you've been affected by that. I did get some questions in a recent video about some gameplay I showed of one of the bows in the game. So there's a lot of questions about this one. This is actually the Tyranny of Heaven. It comes from the Last Wish raid. I have the curated roll right here, which is pretty good. So it's a lightweight frame bow. This one's got flexible string, straight fletching, sneak bow, which isn't my favorite, but it does have dragonfly. And it's really nice because you can get, you know, two or three kills on trash mobs or anything that spawns, you know, in big groups. You can take down a bunch at a time. So dragonfly is actually a pretty nice bonus for these bows. It also comes with a draw time masterwork when you get the curated roll, which is what I believe this one is. And in case you're looking for specific curated rolls, Game Rant posted an article right here. For the age old Bond auto rifle and that curated roll, you have the best chance at Kelly, the Transfiguration Scout Rifle at Surachi, the Nation of Beasts hand cannon, which is an absolute monster. It basically is the Destiny 2 Fatebringer with Outlaw and Dragonfly. That one drops at Morgoth. The Vault can drop the Tyranny of Heaven and the Chattering Bone can come from Riven. Those are the drop locations of the curated rolls. So if you are running the raid, they're pretty good weapons. Definitely worth taking note of that one. But guys, for today, that is going to summarize the news video. Let me know your thoughts below about what we've spoken about, any changes coming up next week that you're excited for, what you're thinking about the Arms Week event. It's looking like that one's going to be pretty interesting. And like I said, it makes a lot of sense. The Bungie have delayed it, much like they did with Faction Rallies and Trials of the Nine. So in Season 5, we're probably going to get some pretty awesome events. Let me know your thoughts about that. Any of the annual pass leaks, the possibility of us finally getting the Rose, whether you think black tier weapons could actually be a thing. But if you have enjoyed the video, guys, a rating really helps me out down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe. Turn on those notifications if you don't want to miss out on any Destiny 2 content. I post all the news, guides, and that good stuff here on the channel. But for now, guys, I appreciate you tuning in as always. And whatever you do, I hope you have an awesome day.